A few years ago, I had the privilege of serving at a mission in Ireland. And in the small village where we were staying, they had something called a mass rock, which I'd never heard of before. But a parishioner explained to us that during the persecution of the Catholic Church, like during penal times, when the churches were closed down and it was illegal to practice the faith in public, hundreds of these mass rocks sprang up all over the country. There were these large flat rocks upon which the holy sacrifice of the mass could be celebrated outdoors, but in secret. There was even a code set up so that people would know when the next mass would take place. A certain woman in the village would dry pieces of clothing over the hedge in front of her house, signifying the number of days until mass would be offered. So four pieces meant four days, three pieces of clothing meant three days, and so on. And mass would most often be celebrated in the middle of the night, so it wouldn't draw attention from the British troops. And in the particular town where we were, they had another rock near the mass rock, and it commemorated a priest who had been shot and killed while celebrating midnight mass for Christmas, because that was a time when the soldiers knew that the people would come, and they surprised them there and killed the priest. And as I knelt by that rock altar, the thought that struck me so forcefully was, these Irish men and women must have known that in the Eucharist and in the sacrifice of the mass, there's something worth dying for. It was during a time when so many things were difficult and painful for them, but they had to believe that in the body and blood and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, there was like a safety much greater than the safety of not coming to receive the Eucharist. And that in everything that was being asked of them during that time, they needed, they truly needed the strength of the Eucharist. So today we begin the Paschal Triduum, three holy days in which we enter into the Holy of Holies of the liturgical year. The Mass of the Last Supper on Holy Thursday evening begins a continual liturgy commemorating the sacred mysteries of the love of God. And in the first reading tonight at Mass, we'll hear the narrative from the Passover, from the book of Exodus where the Israelites were commanded to sacrifice an unblemished lamb and sprinkle its blood over the doorpost and then partake of its flesh. St. John Chrysostom has this beautiful homily where he declares that the saving power of this action of spreading the blood over the doorpost, it wasn't in the blood of the animal itself, but it was in the fact that that was a sign of the Lord's blood that was to come. He said, in those days when the destroying angel saw the blood on the doors, he did not dare to enter. So much less will the devil approach now when he sees not the figurative blood on the doors, but the true blood on the lips of believers, the doors of the temple of Christ. So in our time, when we quibble over mass schedules and struggle to make the Eucharist a priority, perhaps we can take today to really look inward and ask, do I really believe? If the Eucharist really is God, that changes everything. And if what Jesus said in John 6 and at the Last Supper is true, that has to change everything. So we pray, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, change my heart, and give me the grace to receive you just like Our Lady did, with a heart open to being transformed by your presence um, and to receive whatever it is that you desire to do in me. God bless. God bless.